Amplitude is a measurement of the amount of change in air pressure caused by a sound wave. It's a measure of the distance between the middle of the wave and the maximum or minimum of that wave, and it's measured in meters. All other things being equal, if you increase the amplitude of a sound wave, you increase the volume of the sound or note. But the relationship between amplitude and volume is not quite that simple. Amplitude is not the same thing as volume. Volume is perceived and therefore subjective, how loud a sound is. Whereas amplitude is a measurement of how big the sound wave actually is and is therefore objective. Interestingly, the relationship between volume and the number of instruments playing is not one for one. If you double the number of instruments, you do not double the volume of the sound produced. Sound waves can amplify or cancel each other out. This is because of how sound waves interact and is determined by the phase of the sound waves. The phase details where in its cycle a sound wave is at a given point in time. When two sound waves are out of phase with each other, they cancel each other out completely. Just like if you drop two rocks in a bucket of water. When the waves caused by the first rock hit the waves caused by the second rock, they will partially cancel each other out and you will have a jumble of smaller waves. So let's say you're sitting in a quiet room and a single person plays one note on a violin. You can hear the violin very clearly and let's say the loudness level or air pressure level is 10. Now if we add another violin playing the same note, then we have doubled the number of violins playing, but we notice that the volume isn't twice as loud. It's definitely louder, but it's nowhere near twice as loud. In fact, the loudness level is now roughly at 14. This is because of the sound waves produced by the second violin are partially cancelling out the sound waves produced by the first violin. Now in theory, it's possible to sync up the sound waves from the two instruments perfectly, so that they exactly reinforce each other and the volume is doubled. But in practice, this is impossible. And interestingly, in theory, it's possible to sync up the sound waves from the two instruments perfectly, so that they exactly cancel each other out, and you hear complete silence, even though both violins are playing. This is called phase cancellation, and it's how noise cancelling headphones work. So each time you double the number of instruments, you only increase the amplitude by roughly 1.4 times. And note that this only cancels out amplitude, not frequency, so the pitch of the note remains the same. So that's the empirical objective side of things the reduction in air pressure can be measured and observed. But this cancelling out effect isn't the only thing affecting our perception of loudness. Volume is also affected by the way our brain works. And our subjective perception of volume is also affected by a note's frequency, duration, and its absolute level of volume. So the volume of a note depends on its frequency. The hearing range of humans is from about 20 Hz to about 20,000 Hz. But notes in the middle of that range, around the 2000 to 5000 Hz range, sound louder than notes at the extreme bottom or extreme top of the range, even when playing at the same amplitude. So a note at a frequency of 3000 Hz and an amplitude of 0.5 meters will sound louder than a note with a frequency of 200 hertz and an amplitude of 0.5 meters, and also louder than a note with a frequency of 10,000 hertz and an amplitude of 0.5 meters. This is why bass guitars or double basses always sound quieter than the rest of the band, and why you hear the higher pitched instruments over the rest of the orchestra. So low pitched instruments have to play harder to get the same level of volume as higher pitched instruments. Now our perception of volume also depends on the duration of the note. 
our brain pays less attention to very short notes and very long notes. A note played for a second will sound louder than a note played for half a second, even if they have the same amplitude. And a note that's sustained at the same amplitude for 30 seconds will at first sound loud and then sound like it's gradually getting softer as our brain absorbs the note into the background noise. This diminishing intensity of continuous stimuli also occurs with our other senses. A toilet initially smells bad, but then we get used to it. If a sound is continuous and nothing bad happens, your brain loses interest and stops noticing. Your brain is more interested in changes in sound, so when the note stops, you suddenly notice the deafening silence. Our brain also has a diminishing perception of volume. We can hear quiet noises clearly, but then any subsequent increase in amplitude has progressively less impact. The same thing happens with all our other senses. Two roses don't smell twice as sweet as one rose. Two teaspoons of sugar are not twice as sweet as one teaspoon. Having two lights on is not twice as bright as having one light on. Similarly, our brain does not perceive two violins playing the same note as twice as loud as one violin playing that note. But interestingly, this only works if the same sensation is amplified or increased. If a new sensation is introduced, then we perceive both things. If you're smelling a rose over a cup of coffee, you can smell both things. If you have a teaspoon of salt and a teaspoon of sugar, you can taste both things. If a room has a yellow light and a blue light on, you can see both colors. Similarly, if two violins play different notes with a large enough interval around about a perfect fifth or greater, it will sound louder than two violins playing the same note. Our brain is now receiving two distinct sounds or notes and so perceives them as independent sounds and therefore louder. Also, two different notes cancel each other out less because they have different frequencies. Because of this, you actually have to multiply the number of instruments or the sound intensity by 10 in order to double the volume. So if one instrument produces one unit of loudness, then 10 instruments produce two units of loudness and 100 instruments produce four units of loudness. Now, the most common way of measuring loudness is with decibels. The decibel scale is used to compare the relative intensities of any two sounds. It's a measure of the intensity of a sound relative to the threshold of hearing, that is, the intensity of the quietest sound that humans can hear. So zero decibels is the softest level that a human can hear. Normal speaking voices are around 65 decibels, and sounds that are 85 decibels or over can permanently damage your ears if you're exposed to them for a long time. Now, intensity looks at the total amount of energy required to produce a sound. If one violinist requires one unit of energy to produce a note at a given volume, then two violinists require two units of energy, and three violinists require three units, and so on. It ignores the fact that two violins are not twice as loud as one violin. But measuring and comparing intensity is simple, which is why we use it. 1 plus 1 equals 2, not 1.4. But our ears do not hear intensity, rather they hear changes in air pressure. And this is not the same as intensity, as we've already seen. And so decibels measure intensity rather than air pressure changes. So it's an indirect method of measuring volume. And as we've seen, you need to multiply intensity by 10 in order to double the volume. So here's a table that shows loudness, intensity, bells, and decibels. So if one violin has an intensity of 1, and a loudness of 1, and a bell of 0, then 10 violins have an intensity of 10, a loudness of 2, and a bell of 1 and 100 violins have an intensity of 100, a loudness of 4, and a bell of 2. But intensity gives us rather big numbers, so to simplify this, a bell just counts the number of zeros after the 1. 
but this only gives us 12 bells before the volume causes pain, which is too small a number. So we created the decibel, which is just a bell times 10. Now decibels are a logarithmic scale. Each time the loudness of the noise doubles, you add 10 decibels. This means that 20 decibels is twice as loud as 10 decibels, and 90 decibels is twice as loud as 80 decibels. Now obviously, the problem with decibels is that it's an indirect measure of volume and is a logarithmic scale, which makes it a bit difficult to use. Now scientists have created other systems of measuring volume, such as the SONE, which is just a rebased decibel measurement, and the FON, which tries to compensate for the fact that human ears are less sensitive to low notes. But decibels are still the most widely used. But musical instruments do not simply turn on, create a sound at a constant amplitude, and then turn off. Rather, the amplitude of the note changes over time. When you hit a piano key, at first you hear a loud ringing as the hammer hits the string, and then there is an immediate fall in volume as the note is sustained. This variation of amplitude over time is referred to as the envelope. Now the envelope is made up of four parts. The attack, which is the initial strike of the note which creates a loud sound. The decay, which is the drop in intensity immediately after the attack. The sustain, which is the steady state sound of the note as it's sustained and the release, which is when the key is released and the note stops sounding. Now the envelope of a sound helps determine an instrument's timbre. And in fact, it's quite difficult to determine what instrument is playing if you change this envelope, for example, by playing the recording backwards. For example, what instrument is this? What if I play it forwards? So forwards, it obviously sounds like a piano, but backwards, you're not so sure. This is because of the envelope, and every instrument has its own unique envelope. 